Hello, I'm Pastor Paul Prangy, a member of the Global Ministry Committee. It's inevitable that the neighborhoods around our churches change. That's always been true as different waves of immigrants came to America. Germans, Scandinavians, Poles, and more recently, Hmong, Africans, and Latinos. This creates great opportunities to share the gospel with new people groups. But the practical question is, where do we start? The members of Christ Lutheran Church saw their community changing as an increasing number of Latinos moved to this neighborhood, many looking for a new church home. To introduce themselves, the members of Christ Lutheran offered worship outside the church walls with this annual service in the street. We knew that before we could get them inside the doors of the church, if we could get them on the street next to the church and them get to know us, then we'd have a chance of being able to pastor to them, to be able to t teach them about Jesus. This service is part of a larger effort to reach the Latino residents of this neighborhood. Longtime members have found a range of ways to connect with their new neighbors, offering English classes, opening a food pantry, and encouraging Latino families to enroll their children in the church's elementary school. They recognize how important it is to make people of other cultures feel comfortable because they know that Jesus is for all, that Jesus transcends cultures and economics. Many more Wells congregations are in diverse cultural settings, so our Synod has created a toolkit providing a step-by-step -step plan for this special type of evangelism. The toolkit plan encourages church members to meet face-to-face -face with people to find out their specific needs. Having the means to be able to go out and really discover in your community what it is that is needed that's really, really big, really important thing. Once needs are identified, the toolkit then provides ways to connect church leaders with experienced synod mentors who can offer guidance for the specific cross-cultural opportunity. Outreach can include fellowship events, classes, and foreign language worship services, among many others. But one thing every effort has in common, a willingness to reach out in love while addressing the needs of the people. In order for a congregation to be effective in cross-cultural ministry, we really have to come to grips with that, of being welcoming to people who talk differently, who dress differently, who eat differently, uh, whose customs are different. Um, we need to see them. You want to take a little bit off the back? Wells congregations have implemented the toolkit in a range of cultural settings, including Vietnamese, Korean, Chinese, Sudanese, and others. The only way that you can tell people about Jesus Christ, you have to show love to them first. Uh, ties that bind us together as Sharing the love of Christ is the first step. As a congregation's cross-cultural ministry matures, it may mean eventually calling a pastor who speaks the native language a later step in the process. God has tremendously blessed the ministry with uh, many more numbers and uh, we are able to develop the ministry in full scope to meet the needs of the Hmong people. Unlike any other country in history, America attracts people from all over the world and that presents an opportunity to follow the Great Commission in our own backyards. The Cross-Cultural Toolkit comes from the Wells Joint Mission Council, which offers resources for both domestic and international settings. For more information, visit the Wells website for details. Music